Uh, this is Colossus. I'm fogging up my glasses. I think that means you're making me slightly you nervous, know, <laughs> Colossus. All right, so I'm going to transfer her into this container. Oh. Scientists are getting closer to unlocking the medical potential of funnel web venom. To get Colossus to release some of that precious cocktail, researcher Samantha Nixon is giving her a little encouragement. So there she is there trying to show how big she is. Well, she is saying, big. Don't <gasps> mess with me. Look at her big fangs. So you can see she's flexing her fangs. <gasps> she can move those fangs, like articulate yeah. them. And she'll eventually actually drip venom from her fangs. And then I can suck it up with the pipette. She is terrifying. <gasps> oh, there we go. Oh, wow. So you see that tiny little yeah, 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 drop yeah. right on the end of her fang? So it's coming out of both fangs now. Oh, that one's a real big drop. Wow, a minute amount of liquid. That is incredible. All of these bubbles are because it's so protein rich. Thanks, Colossus. Just a few drops of this venom will keep the research team busy for many months. What they've discovered so far is that funnel web venom is made up of a huge number of active molecules. How many molecules did you find? How complex was the venom? Actually, upon a more recent uh, analysis of the venom with more up-to-date technology, we've discovered roughly 3,000 peptides just in this one venom. Each cup Natalie Sayers is laying out represents a single molecule, and the molecules they're most interested in are proteins called peptides. Peptides, what are they? Peptides are just small proteins, mini proteins. They tend to be very specific to their targets. They're found in every cell and tissue and perform a wide range of essential functions in the body. So of those 3,000, do you know what they do? In fact, the majority of these, we don't know what they do. So much unexplored space. Yeah, it really is a new frontier, isn't For it? For sure, yeah. Because they control our biological processes, they're ideal candidates for new, targeted drugs. But to find one with potential amongst the 3,000 required some good luck. Actually, we're more looking at all the different sequences. One of them really stood out to us. It was very similar to a peptide I'd worked on during my PhD and we had an idea that it could potentially have amazing therapeutic implications. What's it called? This one is called HI1A. HI1A. Correct. And it's in here somewhere. It's in here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see if I can find HI1A. The structure of HI1A was similar to a peptide from a South American spider that had previously shown promise as a medicine for brain cells. I think it's it. That's the one. Studies in the laboratory revealed it could be used to reduce the impact of one of the world's biggest causes of death, stroke. In rat models of stroke, we can give the peptide post-stroke, up to eight hours after a stroke, in fact, and we've shown that it actually prevents further brain damage from occurring. Right. So, in theory, we hope that this molecule will be saving brains. In humans? In humans. It must be like a eureka moment. For sure, yeah. yeah. It's very exciting, <laughs> yes. Very proud to be a part of the research. Since that incredible discovery, Glenn King's team has been working to develop a revolutionary new drug. This almost looks like a molecule. Based on the way HI1A works in the body. And this here is the largest nuclear magnetic resonance spectrometer in the southern hemisphere. Wow. With a magnetic field that's about 
400,000 times more than the Earth's magnetic field. My God. And what we use it for is determining the structures of molecules, including HA1A. So you've got all of these amazing people and technology working on these molecules like HI1A, what sort of thing could it be used for in a health context? So what we're trying to develop it for is to treat conditions um, of ischemia. So this is where a tissue is exposed to low oxygen conditions for some period of time. And the classic examples are a heart that's being taken out ready for heart transplant or a stroke. After a stroke, when the blood flow stops and the brain is starved of oxygen, it becomes acidic. And that sets off a deadly chain reaction that destroys brain cells or neurons permanently. But remarkably, the funnel web peptide HI1A stops this process in its tracks, effectively tricking the brain into thinking conditions are normal. So the channel never turns on, the signal never gets sent to the cell execution machinery, and the neuron survives the stroke. So without oxygen, the cell just goes kaput, but what you're doing is essentially putting a chop on the message and saying, no, 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 you're fine, stay fine. Exactly. It's absolutely fantastic. It is an exciting molecule. Yeah.